And I'm going to call this meeting of the Newport Board of Selectmen uh, to order on uh, April 10th, 2023. Would everyone stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I will say that last Tuesday when Biddy called on me to do the pledge, my brain drained right away. I thought, I can't think of the word. <laughs> but I got it. Okay. <laughs> Tonight's agenda. Tonight is a uh, public hearing, one of two we are holding on the Newport Community Power Electronic Aggregation Plan. A uh, little bit of background. Hunter, do you want to do the background, or you want me to? Well, um, that's up to you. Um, I can read this, I guess. Okay, and you. then uh, Henry is, is here to give you the background of the bigger picture of the program. Okay. Uh, the background. Newport. The Newport Town Manager has invited a representative of the Community Power Coalition of New Hampshire, CPCNH, a joint powers agency formed and governed by 30-plus New Hampshire municipalities and counties pursuant to RSA 53-A and RSA 53-E to present on Newport Community Power and CPCNH membership. Implementation of Newport Community Power would establish a locally controlled default electricity supply program and presents an opportunity to lower electricity supply costs for Newport residents and businesses while expanding energy choices. RSA 53-E provides that New Hampshire municipalities may, one, establish an electric aggregation committee, EAC, two, two, oh, three. Uh, two prepare oh. an electronic aggregation plan, EAP, oh, I see, yeah, I missed that, uh, three, hold two public hearings on the EAP in advance of bringing the EAP the town meeting for voter adoption, which authorizes but does not obligate the Board of Selectmen to, four, contract for services to finance, launch, and operate Newport Community Power. Henry Herndon, is that correct? That's correct. Uh, of CPCNH will provide a presentation on Newport Community Power to inform the following uh, preliminary actions for consideration by the Board of Selectmen begin the process of exploring development of Newport Community Power. And I'll turn it over at this point uh, to Mr. Herndon to uh, tell us what we're doing. Yeah, thank you for inviting me out. Um, and uh, it, it's good to be with you. I'm, I'm Henry Herndon. I am a consultant with Community Power Coalition of New Hampshire. This is a recently formed uh, locally controlled power agency in the state that under this recent community power law can become the new electricity supplier for uh, communities that join. And um, I, I have the, the public hearing presentation materials. I'll, I'll walk through that, and I'll be happy to sort of take questions as I go. Feel free to interrupt me. I'm happy to make this conversational, make it a dialogue, if that is the pleasure of the board. And um, the, the decisions that you may or may not wish to consider tonight or at a future meeting would be, one, the, to the creation of an electric aggregation committee, which under the law is sort of required to provide oversight to de the development of your plan that would have to be brought for the town meeting voters. And then the second is uh, you are invited by the coalition to become a member of CPCNH, Community Power Coalition of New Hampshire, and that's now 34 cities and towns in the state that have uh, – by their boards of selectmen or, or other governing bodies voted to adopt the joint powers agreement. And that's the, the contract among and between the cities and towns and the bylaws that govern this new nonprofit so that each town has representation in the oversight of this coalition that is really the new electricity provider. Okay, Henry, um, if I can interrupt just a minute. Uh, if the three of you, let, anyone wants to sit on the side or... We've got a chair up here, and there's another one over there if you want to sit so you can see what's going on because he's on the screen behind you. He's probably going to put some of his material up on this one. I'm hoping to. Okay, there you go. All right. So you're, so, all right. you're out one way or the other. Okay, well, where, 
wherever you want to sit, there's an empty seat. You know, someone can sit next to uh, Hunter if you want. Okay, go ahead, Henry. Sorry to interrupt. Okay, so I'll pre present the, the materials uh, for the public hearing of the draft Newport Electric Aggregation Plan. Okay. Um, and and uh, I will. I'm happy to answer questions as we go. And um, yeah, we can we can just dive into it. So this is a very exciting time. I'm actually um, just coming out of a board meeting of Community Power Coalition um, where they approved a. Uh, well, they're, they're getting very close, let's say, to onboarding uh, a CEO, which is very exciting at this launch stage. So this is an organization that has been in startup for a year and a half, perhaps three years, depending on how you measure it. Um, and right now, in uh, April, May, June, July, is launching power supply service for 10 cities and towns across the state. So from Nashua to Lebanon and Hanover to Walpole and Peterborough to Rye and Exeter. Um, becoming the new electricity provider, selling electricity to lower costs for residents and businesses and create more opportunity. So um, we'll get into all the details of what this will mean for Newport, but uh, sort of the shortest version is if the Board of Selectmen moves forward and the town voters move forward, um, then Newport can create a program that will achieve an economy of scale to result in more affordable electricity supply and expand options for customers who may want to choose different sources of energy um, or or perhaps uh, find ways to develop local energy projects to benefit the community. Uh, so our agenda will walk through what is community power, what is this electric irrigation plan, what is this statewide coalition of, of communities that have come together to, to make use of this legislation, and then what is a timeline that Newport could... Um, the, a path where you could take to getting this off the ground in perhaps the next 12 months or so. <clears throat> so, quick high-level summary. These programs, community power programs, they're authorized under RSA 53E, and that has been on the books for some time, but was really made workable with legislation in 2019 and 2021. Um, and the legislature's intent here is to encourage voluntary, cost-effective, and innovative solutions to local needs with careful consideration for local conditions and opportunities. So this is legislation that is focused on letting New Hampshire's municipalities, town Newport, other cities and towns across the state, have greater local control over their electricity supply decisions. Um, they do this by pooling or aggregating the, the bulk purchasing power of electricity supply across the customer base, across the residents and businesses, um, and the goals being lowering costs and expanding access for renewables. So I have the legislation cited here. I encourage folks to take a look at that if um, they are interested in, in reading some of the details. There's sort of three pieces. Um, on the left of this slide, we're looking at the source. So Newport Community Power, should the town move forward, would purchase electricity from the sources that the, the town of Newport chooses, whatever they may be, uh, whether that's prioritizing cost effectiveness or, or some other objective. Um, importantly, in the middle of this slide, the delivery of electricity would remain with your <coughs> distribution companies. So that's Eversource, would, would continue to own the grid, operate the grid, deliver power, build a customer, all of that remains unchanged. The only difference is you get to now choose the source of that electricity. And then third, on the community side, there's the benefits to the, the customers, there's the lower rates or, or new rate product offerings, and then um, you know we'll get into the specific offerings, but current launching communities are offering things like 50% or 100% renewable energy on an optional basis if a customer would choose that. And I, I have my map here. I just want to double check that I think Newport is that there, is, there are two utility companies, if I'm not mistaken. There's the New Hampshire Electric Cooperative and Eversource. Correct. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. So this program would not apply on a default basis to New Hampshire Electric Co-op because they're already their own cooperative program, uh, and they actually have competitive supply rates relative to Eversource. Eversource sort of has... It tends to have higher rates, and, and it, um, it's easier to compete with them on pricing. So this would apply on a default basis to the Eversource customers, but not to the New Hampshire Electric Co-op customers. They could choose to join, though. 
so some of the benefits, uh, I mentioned local control, lower costs. We've seen other states demonstrate lower costs, and we're going to get into the rates that are approved and going live in these 10 cities and towns uh, in less than a month um, and the considerable savings that are, that are being created. Um, some communities are really excited about the possibility of signing longer-term contracts with solar developers or other energy project developers to then supply power to the community power portfolio and really sort of start to source locally if that's a cost-effective option for them. And then there's a number of other innovations. But one of the key details from your draft plan is this statement here at the bottom. Um, Newport Community Power will only launch if it is able to initially offer residential default rates that are lower than those offered by Eversource. So you can build into your plan. This program does not go live unless it's saving customers money. So we'll take a sort of step back and, and, and refresh um, the two pieces of our electric bill. So half the bill is this blue portion that electricity supply, and that's really what we're talking about. And currently that's a, that's a competitive market in New Hampshire. Uh, any customer can go out and find a broker and a supplier and, and shop for power. Um, and those who don't shop take a, a utility default, Eversource default supply. The green portion of the bill is the delivery. This is poles and wires. This is Eversource's transmission and distribution system, and that is the monopoly that only Eversource controls or the other distribution utilities like the, the electric cooperative. So community power affects this blue portion, and it really is about expanding the, you know, many large customers, perhaps the town of Newport as a municipality or, or, you know, some of the larger commercial accounts, they go into the power market, they shop with a competitive supplier, they get better rates. But typically, residential customers, they have a harder time getting those benefits. Um, they either don't take action, don't choose to shop for a power supplier, or when they do, they get caught up in a, a teaser rate where it looks really good for a couple of months, and then your supplier sort of jacks up the rate on you over time, and it ends up costing customers money. So community power is about expanding the benefits of, of choice in the power sector to the, the residential class broadly. So on your bill, what this would look like if, let's say, 12 or maybe 24 months or, or whenever from now Newport goes live, uh, the portion of the bill that says supplier, um, that would be replaced with Newport Community Power and your new electricity supply rates that are uh, approved under this program. Everything else would remain the same. The delivery charge remains the same, and Eversource still gets paid for that. So I'll, I'll summarize a few key points here. Um, if and when you put a plan, bring it to town meeting, and then over the course of the next year, contract for services, you probably wouldn't bring a program online until 2024. Um, but if you do all of those things, uh, and launch a program, then most of the Eversource default electric supply customers will be automatically switched into new market, or sorry, Newport Community Power, and you would be the new default power supply. Um, participation will be voluntary. Any customer could opt out and choose not to participate with no fee at any time. Eversource would still own the grid. Customers who already shop in the market would be unaffected, uh, and they would remain with their third-party supplier. And these programs have no impact whatsoever on tax base. So they're funded through the sale of electricity um, and the, the electricity supply charge the customer pays. And uh, by law, they're prohibited from being funded through tax revenues. So that's sort of our summary. Um, and I could take any questions if there are any, or I could, I could charge ahead with this, the plan. Henry, uh, one question. You mentioned this also can be used by businesses, and I would imagine you're talking about our smaller, like Main Street businesses or such, not a huge, you know, factory that probably has already shot for their electricity. Yeah, that's a good question, and, and I understand from, from the town manager that you've got a couple of those, but Ruger and perhaps another. Um, it is most likely the case that those types of large sort of industrial class customers already are shopping in the market for themselves. They're pretty sophisticated. They have pretty high electricity costs. Um, 
And even if they weren't, though, the largest industrial class right as of right now would not be uh, defaulted into the Newport community power. Um, the determining factor here is um, is the customer on the Eversource default. So if you're a residential <coughs> or if you're a commercial customer, if you don't shop for power in the market, you now get switched to Newport Community Power, unless you're the largest class of customer. Okay, if someone is already shopping with a third party for electricity, can they switch to uh, this program? Yes, they can, and we advise them that they understand their cancellation policy and whether or not there may be a cancellation fee, and then they can make that decision. Uh, uh, so they can either see that there's no fee, they can decide, I want to pay the fee and enroll in Newport Community Power, or they can wait until the, uh, the contract expires. Anyone else have questions at this point? Yeah, I do. Go ahead. <coughs> So the PUC granted Eversource and all utility companies the ability to increase their rates last year. What would stop them from increasing the delivery fee to kind of balance this out? <laughs> yeah, if I the whole thing goes this and, way, um, I mean. I yeah, it's the, um, the delivery fee and so a couple things. The supply part of the bill, Eversource does not lose any revenue if a customer chooses to buy from a third power, third party provider, or if the customer gets switched into community power, that has no impact on Eversource's revenue. All of Eversource's revenue is coming out of the delivery side of the bill, and that's going to remain unchanged. So they're, they're indifferent financially, and it does not matter to them if, if you're buying from Eversource default, if you're buying from a third party, or if you're enrolled in community power, they're still going to get paid on the delivery side regardless. So they, they, have, they wouldn't they wouldn't be able to do that. But they would be able to raise the rate if they chose. So, the I mean, they do, they do propose rate increases at the Public Utility Commission, and they have these, you know, adjudicated processes um, to hammer that out. That, that will continue to occur, and it, it's really unrelated to whether or not community power is a, a program. Now, community power, uh, were you done, Jim? Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Good for now. Um, are we going to have to set up some committee, mm -hmm. community mechanism here that actually runs this for, for Newport? That's a good question. So that is why these other cities and towns around the state created Community Power Coalition of New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. They created one nonprofit to do all of the admin, all of the power purchasing, the risk management, sit in the wholesale market, buy electricity, change data with utility companies, bill customers, collect revenues on your behalf. So that is that is all done through the coalition so that the town of Newport doesn't have to hire, you know, a power procurement manager Good. or something to that effect. So when we get into the portion of the slides where we talk a little bit about the coalition, we can unpack that further. But the short answer is, is no. The town does not need to add any staff or administrative capacity. Um, you could either become a member of the coalition and use our capacities or you could also hire a different third party. There are other brokers in the market that, that you can choose to provide service as well. Yeah, I just don't want to start getting phone calls about complaining about utility rates. So, Yeah, so uh, our customer service center went live two weeks ago. Uh, we have a call center. We have customer service reps. Um, we have, you know, an email address, websites, uh, all of the above. And I'd encourage you all to, to check out communitypowernh.gov and that's the site the customer sees, that's how customers opt in and out, mm -hmm. that has the customer service phone number and email address um, so that's all handled through the coalition on behalf of all the members mm -hmm. so that town halls if you are getting calls, you know you say that's not our job, contact these folks here, they are the customer service for this program Yeah. now oh, go ahead. I'm going to shut up and let some other people ask questions Henry, Newport Senior Center, is that considered a business? Or so they are a residential. It, yeah, so that the question for the Newport Senior Center is <clears throat> do they take Eversource default supply or are they already have somebody there who's gone and shops for power for their accounts as a whole? And and I don't know the answer to that, but depending on the answer to that question, if they're taking the Eversource power, they would be switched into Newport, 
community power at the lower rate. And if they're already shopping with a, with a third party, then they would not be switched. Gotcha. Second question. On the map, you have the towns that have already gone community power coalition. Can you name a few towns that have not and that they gave away recently? So on the map that I have provided, those are all towns that have joined the coalition as a member. And there's a couple of categories. Ten of them, they're going live. They checked all the boxes. There's a long string of boxes. And they, the customers get switched at the end of this month. Uh, another, let's say, ten of them uh, have approved a town meeting and are in the process of sort of signing contracts either with us or, or potentially another party. Um, which is a pathway. None have no member of the coalition has contracted with a different provider as of yet. Um, I can say that not on that map. There are some towns like Keene or, or Marlboro, perhaps, that have hired a company other than this nonprofit coalition to run their program. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions at this point? Yeah, I, I have a question, and the question is: You spoke about. Uh, people going to um, NH, cbnh.com to sign up. If people are not computer li uh, li uh, literate or have a use have the use of a computer, how would they contact? They would they would call one eight six 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 zero three power p o w r, which is let's see seven. Six, nine, seven. Thank you. And um, just to be clear, so right now, folks in Newport cannot sign up with us. Yeah. You have to go through town meeting and approve a program. Correct. Um, first. Correct. Okay. All right. So there's. I kind of got caught in between. I turned the TV on, and here I am. So I missed probably ten minutes. Um, the other day we talked about this community program at the, at the, at the deliberation, as, as you know, and I, and I don't know what I missed as far as I understood it to be that we were automatically enrolled. And yep. we had to literally say, contact them to say, no, we don't want part of it, or whatever. If Newport, what did I miss? And I if, apologize for that. If you don't want to explain it, I can come later. It's my fault. Well, there's going to be a second public hearing in two weeks. But right. the short answer is, if you are getting... Eversource's default power supplier, uh -huh. you haven't shopped and selected your own power supplier, then people with Eversource's default power supplier will be switched automatically to this if we join it. And everyone gets a letter saying that, correct? Well, yeah, we and, and this is a great off. question for the next part of the presentation, actually. Um, and I, got, I want to be clear, so no decision you make tonight will initiate a program. Right. If you were, even if you were to vote to join the coalition as a member and adopt this joint powers agreement, that comes with no commitment, no obligation to launch. That's merely sort of getting access to services and, and peers around the state to help you on about a 12-month journey, and there will be contracts brought back to the Board of Selectmen, you know, six, eight months from now. Um, so not, we're, we're, we're far away from that, but I do want to, the next portion of the presentation, we'll talk about this opt-in, opt-out, and enrollment. Okay. Process. That's what I want to hear about. You. I'm cons I'm concerned that today I leave it. I, I'm automatically enrolled. That's if we adopt it at the meeting in, in mm -hmm. May, uh, May, right? Am I correct? Well, that that if we go by Article 18. We automatically go for that, and that means I'm, I'm immediately. Well, enrolled, let's right? let's hear what he says. Well, I, okay. Yeah. And, and yeah, to be to be clear, if you do go all the way to signing to to voting at town meeting, adopting contracts, launching a program in April. Um, and and the if the que the questioner the, the individual the gentleman asking the question um, if you are on the Eversource default you would be transitioned after a 30 day mailer period to this program and you could choose not to participate before that 30 days is up or any time after that 30 days but you would be automatically enrolled you are correct so I'll, I'll talk through this next section. Um, so the plan, this is required under the law, um, and the law provides that the Board of Selectmen can establish a committee. You know, I call it a community power committee here. It's called an electric aggregation committee in the legislation. You know, same thing. Um, 
The purpose of that committee is to develop a plan that is also provided for under the law, and it really just is the details of how the program will operate and comply with the state laws. And as part of that process, there are two public hearings. This is the first of those two public hearings. All right, and the second one is on the 25th, not the 24th. Okay, that's helpful. We can correct that. Yeah. Um, and the, the plan summarizes goals and objectives. It defines governance. You know, what is the Board of Selectmen authorized to do? How would implementation occur? How would customers be noticed and enrolled? And what are their options? Which get to that, get to that question that was just asked. There's some sort of generic rules and regulations uh, providing universal access, reliability, and equitable treatment of all classes of customers. You have to meet minimum environmental standards under state law. Uh, the plan also addresses things like net metered customers, customers who generate their own power and feed it back into the grid, and um, electric assistance program customers. These are income qualified customers that receive a discount on their electricity rate, and these types of customers are accommodated and, and they continue to receive their benefits. Um, what the plan does not do is it doesn't commit the town to a defined course of action, and it doesn't impose financial commitment or liability. It just authorize, it gives the Board of Selectmen the authority to move forward with the program if it would choose to do so. This is the structure of the plan. Um, you know, it's got an introduction, it has an overview, it has the goals and objectives, and it has the legal requirements. And then there are a couple of appendices that deal with some of the technical uh, sort of regulated areas, the net metering customers, load serving entity. This is, um, these are the entities that sit in the wholesale electricity market as a, a market participant and, and buy electricity supply on your behalf. So there's some detail on how that works, how customer data is protected, and some abbreviations. So the, the notification process. This is a photo from the letters that every electric account in the city of Nashua received last week. Um, and it says, you know, it had, it, part of what the coalition provides is coordinating with the members to develop their custom community power logos and, you know, the whole branding and marketing and that sort of thing. But, you know, important electricity supply rate reduction information inside, how to opt out, opt in, or opt up. And then, you know, within the actual letter, there's there's further detail on how the program works and what all your options are. This is actually just one of the four pages. Um, so this is what every customer received, and what's in, entailed inside is um, the following information, essentially. It will tell the customer that at least, that will receive the letter at least, the, the letter will be sent at least 30 days before the program launches. And it will include the fixed rate of the program. How much is the electric supply rate of this program compared to the Eversource rate? Customers will be provided the option to decline to participate, to opt out by calling the number, emailing the email address, visiting the website, and self-selecting through a portal. Um, and uh, any customer can do that before or after the enrollment date. We discussed the third the customers on competitive supply are unaffected but can opt in. And again, there's no exit fee or, or penalty for switching in and out of the program on an individual basis. Now, this slide shows the rates that are going live in the, the first few communities. So maybe we can start on this um, left side here. Uh, we see, can you see my mouse on the screen? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So we have the utility rates, and right now they're at 20 cents for Eversource. Um, and the coalition is launching service with a 15.8 cent per kilowatt hour rate. This is a rate that is approved by the coalition's board, which is comprised of representatives from every participating town at present. So the member, the member communities select <coughs> this rate. Um, and so we're seeing 22% savings for Eversource customers. That's about 20 bucks a month, 25 bucks a month for a typical Eversource customer. I will note that these rates are effective through July 31st of this year. So that's only a really a three or four month period. The reason for that is because the Eversource rates are going to change on August 1. Eversource rates change twice a year, August 1st, February 1st. And the coalition is going to adjust its rates 
as the utility rates change so we can maintain a discount and we're not locked into maybe like a 36-month contract and then Eversource goes back in to change rates and they undercut our fixed contract. Um, I'm also showing here Peter Burrows, just as an example. They're, exam they're saving $22 a month per customer. Um, <clears throat> and that's a collected $226,000 uh, for just the first three months of the program. But what I want to draw your attention to is this three-month reserves. So typically, you would a, a customer would buy power from a private competitive supplier. They would get a discounted rate. They pay the supplier, and built into that rate is the cost of electricity plus you know the supplier's overhead and then their profit margin. They have you know a healthy profit margin built into that supply rate. What the coalition does is it is a nonprofit supplier owned by the communities. So the revenue, the net profit, is actually accrued by the communities and held in reserve funds on the behalf of the members for their collective benefit. So just Peterborough alone, it's about $400,000 in reserves for the first three months of operation. And collectively, the coalition, I think we're, we're looking at $8 million in reserves for the first three months across those 10 towns. And the reason and the benefit of that is you build up healthy reserves and you can keep rates stable and low over time. Prices will change in the future. Rates will go up. There will be a price shock. You can lean on that reserve fund to maintain stability instead of having this volatile up and down price spike. Um, and there's also a number of other benefits uh, in terms of developing projects over the long term. Um, and, but perhaps we won't get too into that right now. Um, the other thing I just want to highlight is the, uh, the rate table. So, you know, the default for a town would be, could be the minimum renewable content. We call that grand basic default power, 15.8 cents, and about $95 a month. Any individual customer could also choose, you know, granite plus 33% renewable, clean 50, clean 100. They could pay premiums for these. And currently, all four of these product options are cheaper than Eversource's default rate. So, Henry, let me ask this question. Uh, so with the four options that are cheaper than Eversource, we as a community can decide we, we want the base rate to be the granite basic, say. But if someone is very into green energy, they can actually opt to choose a different level that has, you know, more clean energy than the base rate on their own, right? We That's right. By, by us picking a level, we don't lock the entire community into it, correct? Correct. That's right. Okay. So, but if we pick the high, higher one, like the clean 100, then uh, people can choose to go to the lower one, Correct. Yes, but right now we do not actually have the option of defaulting customers into Clean 100. So this, right. you couldn't have Clean 100 be the default, but sometimes you could have Grant Basic or Grant Plus. So, for example, Peterborough okay. chose to default all customers into Granite Plus for 33% renewable at 16.2, and customers can opt down to Granite Basic. And two okay. or three towns chose that higher renewable energy as the default, yeah. But most towns did choose the, the Granite Basic as okay. the default. And then no one chose Clean 50 or Clean 100. Okay. We're not offering that as broad-based auto. Right. It, it was just an example. And it's mainly, you know, the town doesn't set a threshold. You know, so people can choose a lower one if they want. Okay. That's right. Okay. Um, we talked a little bit about the coalition. This is comprehensive services to plan launch and operate programs. So this is everything from developing your template plan, uh, creating educational materials and supporting you through town meeting and supporting hearings like this, to after the plan, there's a number of interactions with the utility company in terms of uh, acquiring certain data, um, procuring your electricity and managing your power portfolio for risk over the long term. Um, all of the retail customer service, uh, we get the, the mailing data from the utility companies, process that. You know, I've got one of the letters here. We have a print mail shop. Um, so sending all the notifications, enrolling customers through utility data exchange, um, 
and then really just ongoing operation of the program. So that is that is uh, comprehensive service through the coalition for all of its members. The members uh, currently there's 30, 34 that have adopted the joint powers agreement. Um, that's about 20 percent of the state population, and it's it really it's setting up this group to be the largest power supplier in the state. Uh, they're not quite yet larger than Eversource, but they are uh, at full enrollment of these 30 towns will be larger than the co-op or Units Hill or Liberty Utilities, which are the other utilities in the state in terms of electricity <coughs> sale. Again, not owning the grid, but in terms of power procurement. Um, so that's considerable revenue, considerable economy of scale, and um, that's all really controlled by the membership through this, this nonprofit. So there's there's 10 going live now, a couple more this year, and then the rest, uh, you know, Newport will be well positioned to get on the track to launch in April of next year, and we can get into that timeline. Uh, just so a bit, you have a question on that, those arrows? What? The back of the color codes on those arrows, what, what, what's the significance of that or nothing? What, I, why I get over I red? Did, why, I, why infield yellow? Did I miss something? Nope. No, you didn't, and it's a good question because people ask it all the time, and it suggests that we shouldn't color code these because this, the colors don't mean anything. Okay. Um, so <laughs> that's a good point, and I, I think I've heard it enough that I'm going to change the colors. Okay. Um, they're nice to look at. Yeah, they, they're just in order. There's four colors that are in order. I mean, you can kind of see Hanover is red right. and Hanover's here and Lebanon's green and Lebanon's here, but... I think it can. I think it's more confusing than helpful, yeah, perhaps. Because I do, do know Enfield has already sent out letters mm -hmm. and stuff to correspondence to their residents, and that's why I asked that question. So, okay. so they obviously have approved this or whatever. So, thank yeah. you. I, I believe the first ten in this list have sent letters. That's right. The first. Well, no, not Dover. So. No, I don't want Dover. Enfield, so but yeah. Plainfield and Enfield have, yeah. but Dover and Warren. Yeah, so it's not. Yeah, I don't know. My, my daughter, right here, my right daughter got one for Lebanon. I have another matter. I should have opened it. So I'm going to talk about timeline, and then I think we can, uh, you know, have more Q and A and wrap up. But sure. so it's April 10th. This is the first public hearing. Uh, if the town of Newport were to choose to do so, you could become a member of the coalition to receive the comprehensive services and support on your journey without any commitment to actually taking power supply service from the coalition. Um, so you could adopt that joint powers agreement and then you could terminate membership and leave with no cost or obligation. Um, and then the other thing that I think maybe this should be first is the consideration of establishing a community power committee or an electric irrigation committee. So those are things that could be done tonight. Um, you could you know, defer action on the joint powers agreement or establishing the committee. I, I wouldn't suggest deferring action on establishing the committee, but you certainly could consider deferring action on the joint powers agreement to the 24th uh, or 25th. indefinitely. Um, and then you could have a public hearing. This should be the 25th, April 25th public hearing. Um, and I understand your town meeting to vote on a warrant article to adopt the plan okay. would be May 9th. So then you're fully locally approved. The next half of the year, uh, May through December, you submit that plan to the State Public Utilities Commission, and they would review that and approve it within 60 days of receipt. And uh, and then you really get to choose, do we want to hire CPCNH, this coalition, to run our program, or do we want to hire a different provider? And and those both options are both available to you. Um, in what we would advise, and likely what the track with the coalition would be is, mail notices in in February or March 2024 to enroll customers in April. As we're entering springtime, prices tend to fall. It just tends to be a financially advantageous time to go into the power market in the spring when we're coming out of high-cost winter. I have, this, this may be too much detail for this, but I do just want to illustrate, you know, internally from like a project management <laughs> perspective, you know, that there are more granular steps. There's some regulatory steps. We track all of that. We manage all of that. There's sort of three phases, one being the joining the coalition with that joint powers agreement. The second phase, which you're in the thick of, is uh, creating a committee, um, developing your plan, having your public hearings, going to town meeting, and that completes your, your local adoption. 
And then there's a whole third phase that comes after that. That would be after May, where you submit to the Public Utility Commission. They have to approve it. There's various data exchanges with, with your provider. Um, you know, the coalition prepares public <coughs> education materials, publishes websites. Again, visit that communitypowernh.gov to see the, our websites. Um, procurement, you would be in, you know, you would participate in the procurement, an electricity procurement, um, noticing the utilities, mailing the letters, having a public information session, and then finally launching. So this, it's a lot of detail for this early stage, but I do just want to foreshadow there's, you know, there is a comprehensive sort of project management aspect to this. And that's really the end of the presentation. I'm, I'm happy to answer any other questions. Jim? Uh, on the high-level timeline, uh, under May 23, December 23, uh, submit plan to utilities. What does that plan consist of, and, and who does that that plan? What does that plan consist of? So there's a draft of the plan that has been circulated, um, and it's available for review, and it largely covers the, the summary of the information that I just covered in this presentation, how our customers notified and enrolled. Uh, what I didn't really get into here is, like, what are your goals and objectives? And that's an area where, where I think Newport may want to customize over the next couple of weeks. Like, is this just about cost savings? Does Newport, in any sort of resolution, have any kind of clean energy goal? I, I'm not sure but that could be in the goals. So um, the plan covers a lot of material from this presentation, as well as the goals, as well as the legal requirements. And follow-up to that, the commission, are most communities choosing to, their boards, such as us, uh, to be that commission, or are they drafting or coming up with a, with a separate utility commission by community? Um, I, I believe the, the committee that is referred to in the law. Yeah, so generally the, the Board of Selectmen is not the committee. Generally there is a separate committee with maybe a staff person, maybe one or two volunteers, or, or perhaps more volunteers actually. Um, and they're really there are folks that would do some of the heavy research before and after town meeting, and they would, you know, they would have a little bit more of a hand with someone like me in making sure they understand that plan front to back. Um, so yeah, I, I would suggest appointing a committee that is separate from the Board of Selectmen. Perhaps one of the members of the Board of Selectmen wants to sit on that committee, perhaps not, perhaps the town manager or, or other volunteers, but that's uh, really up to all of you. Thank you. Barry? You have... Go ahead, Ed. Go ahead. Ed, you have a question? Or well, I was just pointing to Barry, see, you ought to be on the committee. Uh, I don't think so. But I will ask a question if you're ready. Sure. What? I, I, and I don't want to be ignorant about this thing because, again, I came in a little late. So what does it mean to, to the people out there that are kind of still confused? Tomorrow, uh, May 9th, we, we approve this, right? We vote on it. We mm -hmm. agree to it. So looking at the timeline, uh, so, so one day after February, we're going to get the letters. At what point are we going to begin to be billed by this? Separate company, if I call it. It will not be a bill from Eversource. Explain that. To the it would. It, it would be. A, it would be a bill from Eversource, just like you get now. Except instead of listing whoever the electric utility is now, it would list like Newport Community Power. You know, it lists the power supplier and the rate that power supplier charges, and that's the first half of your bill. And then Eversource basically is the delivery. Exactly. It's not, the, it's not the supply. It's, it's, a little, yeah, it's on that part. Yeah, right. I get like, that part of it, yeah. Right. It'll, it'll come in the same kind of envelope you get now. But it'll be under this Newport Community Center, mm -hmm. which is Just overseen by what he, what he suggested is a group here to, to, as a committee, so to speak, to right. report. How does that... It doesn't enter into any of our budget process, obviously, right? No. Am I correct on that? I just, I just want to cut... No. Correct me if I'm asking the wrong questions, but I'm really, I just... Like but, but you can look at it as we're saving you money on your electric bill, so well, we can no charge problem, it on no your doubt. taxes. We, we all agree with that. But one of the concerns are that it's forced onto us, and I, I don't see that that's the case now. It seems it, like it's initially put onto us or the people, because I ran into a Nenfield. I had property over there of my daughter, and they, they have this. She's questioning, do I have to take this? Obviously, it's the right thing, way to go, but if you do not follow up with somehow some process right. it's automatic. This, right? this is it's, this is the process set you know by state law. Yeah. 
that's being followed, and you know they basically make, I guess, requires us to make sure we understand it and set up a committee to go forward with it. And uh, everyone, you know, as it is, if you're paying the high, you know, uh, generic Eversource supply rates, you're automatically <coughs> going to be switched to a lower rate and told if you want out, you can get out. You know, also if you, you know, are very into saving the environment and trees and all that stuff, you can choose, you know, one of the options, you know, where some or all of it, or some of your power at least can come from cleaner energy than, you know, burning coal or natural gas, I guess. So. Can I ask one more question and don't... And then Keep I'm going. Ask Keep going. Oh, I'm sorry. No, nope. so... Oh, sure. I did it the other night. Damn it, I forgot the first part of it, but... Individually, what are your each one of your thoughts on that? And do you believe that do you feel comfortably that this will be stable, or that something could change in the next year to say, "Oh, gee whiz, this thing failed, and we're going to going to be double the price or anything." What are your thoughts? On, what individually, what are your thoughts on that? How do you support it? We, 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 we look to you for for advice. On it. Is, is that a fair question? The way I am understanding it at this point. Um, you, you can take part in this program for two or three months. If you don't like it or you don't understand it or you don't want to do it anymore, you can opt out at any point. I buy that. But what do you, what do you personally believe? From your, you've been studying this longer than I have, obviously. What do you, what do you feel about it? Can I ask that question? Is that unfair? No, it's a good question. It's similar to most of your supplier um, contract people. That, I mean, every once in a while you get them in the mail. They say they'll give you a supply rate less than you're paying now. I mean, I get them all the time, but uh, I don't usually take advantage of them because I don't trust them. Well, I think what the gentleman's asking is, is that each individual has their own right yeah. to make their own decision. Sure. Well, asking each one of these. I, let, me, let, let, me, let me let me just we add. Do. We all do, but I want to know what you all feel. Well, like right now, right what, now, what would you do? And I Ed, think you just told me in your case. So Ed, I can tell you, I'm getting my power through. I think it's ENH power. Which is not the EverSource default. No, that's that other thing. Yeah, and it's one we signed up for a while ago. And back when the rates were going up, we got a notice your rates going to go up from this to that. And I went to their website, and they were offering new customers a rate less than what they were going to raise <laughs> me to. So I called them up and said, "Can I get this rate?" And they checked, and they didn't match it, but they came close enough for me. And, and if I and if I wanted to, I could have switched. You during know, the, during the, big, the big increase with Eversource, the other private companies, they, they, people were very happy with it. But they found out not too long afterwards that it's only a matter of time that they're, they're caught in the same web. And I just wanted to know if you're comfortable with this arrangement from what you've read from your side of it. Yes, I, and let me, let me also... Me, I'm, I'm going to you out each one if I may. But let me also say with e &H Power, when we got the new rate, you know, basically it was, it was a 24-month rate. And it will cost you a hundred bucks to get out. Yeah. Well, I mean, if I'm upset with it enough to invest a hundred bucks to get out, then so be it. You know, I I can afford it if there's something. People, can, other people can. Right, but you're saving five, ten bucks a month. You know, with it, and I'm certainly saving. You know, easily a hundred bucks over time compared to whatever source was. So it's it's I'm doing it on we're doing it on our own, and we're happy with it. I have an advantage because I'm in the business, I understand that. I just want to be sure that the public is very confused. A lot of them are very confused on that. So, what do you say about that? I'm just, may I ask? My, my, I'm, yep, I'm, I'm answering it. it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, my take on this is something that we are able to afford the citizens of Newport the ability to save money. Mm -hmm. We don't do that anywhere near enough. And when this process comes along, this affords us an opportunity to save money. If they want to, if they don't want to save it and they want to keep it 100% as it is or do like Jeff did and pick somebody different, then you're welcome to do that. Uh, this is simply us finding this program through the town manager to be able to offer this. And if they want to do it, great. If they don't, then for me it's a no-brainer. I don't know why I would want to spend another dime that I don't have to spend. I'd like to save as much as I possibly could. And... They've got, through his presentation, um, the mechanisms to keep these rates below whatever source would be in the future. But if, for whatever reason, 
the wheels come off the cart, so to speak, and their power doubles over what another. Nothing's to prevent us under 54 uh, e that uh, statute that's prevented here. 53. 53. I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, to switch to somebody else. So that exists today. It will exist tomorrow. This is just an opportunity um, for us to be able to offer this to a, the, the larger group of the community. One question that came up during the deliberative session was, would this be uh, open to businesses? That was one of the questions that I asked that we really didn't have a, a hard answer. That's been answered tonight. That I'm sure most of our larger businesses already do shop for their power, but for those that maybe aren't that large, uh, this might afford them another opportunity to save a little bit more money on their utility bills. So I see it as a win-win with the option to always change back if we don't like it. You have the faith and trust in, okay, no, I'm not just going to want to and Thank you. Obviously and another, right. another thing to keep in mind, when the power lines go down, it's, it's going to be every source that comes out. Sure. Yeah. Who's, yeah. Who the supplier is. Yeah. You're going to know that. People yeah. need to know that. It's not right. It's and private. It, no. right. And every source is not checking a list saying, oh, they're getting it through Newport Community Power. We'll, we'll do that last. That's the same with phone systems. I understand yeah. all that. I do. I'm kind of glad that you mentioned that. That's yeah. People see, heard, I, people heard that. I see this. One of the advantages in I don't pay. I have solar, so you want to hear about the net metering? Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> I really don't pay a bill other than that stupid delivery fee that I still have to pay to Eversource. But anyway, this is a co-op type process, so you're broadening out your ability to negotiate for rate processes. I belong to a co-op for my for my propane. You wouldn't believe I get a lot cheaper propane than what people are paying ordinarily. So to me, the advantage would be it offers the town the ability to save. It also broadens out the negotiation power with this with this co-op. And then, you know, you, you can always opt out, which I think is going to be the sticking point for some people. They'll, they'll get concerned. I'm forced into this. How do I get out of it? What if I forget to do this? What if I forget to do that? It's like me canceling magazine subscriptions. You know, it's paying the neck. Uh, but I, I view the co-op part of it as a really positive sense where you're broadening things out. I see that with the three of you, and I believe, obviously, you do, sir. And, and I guess what I would ask is that you, back to the committee that would be so overseeing this, which may not be the town, you mentioned a group that that would uh, that the term I want to use or we're seeing. I would say that would they communicate constantly with the community to, to allow to be able to say, how do I get out of this if I don't want it? There are mm. people that are very confused with that. that, that, you know, that yeah, I think that's going to be a sticking say, point. Yeah. Ages yeah. like my age, whatever, I don't know where I am now. You know, I'm young teaching you. But seriously, it's, it, they, need, they need that. So thank you. Yeah. And thank you for conducting this. Yeah. At least you're not in jail taking a shower like you said the other night at the meeting. <laughs> you don't have to. Do you guys have any questions? No, I don't see any any downside to this. And I think it's good that you're looking into this and doing the legwork for us. Because I don't think I would do it as an individual. I just pay the rent. Yeah. Mm. But by doing this, it's, it's helping us out. Yeah. And what's what's the downside? You save money. I have a question for Mr. Herndon. Um, you mentioned the uh, the reserves, um, and those would be used to stabilize the, the future rates. Um, and the coalition itself is a nonprofit, correct? Correct. Um, is it considered a public or a private entity? Or? It is subject to to the right to know law, ninety one A, and it, all its meetings are public, and all of its minutes are public. In the future, if the coalition, say, three, four years down the road, um, either isn't successful or isn't, uh, I don't know how to say it, but uh, perhaps, perhaps one of the other companies, supply companies, um, could they purchase this coalition for their own? Good point. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 
in this scenario, let, let's say there's a scenario where, for whatever reason, the coalition's costs exceed its revenues, and um, it's no longer financially viable. Um, what would happen is not not that a supplier would buy it, but that it would, you know, file bankruptcy and shut down operations and liquidate and redistribute all of its assets, all of its financial reserves. Um, we, we feel that's the highly unlikely scenario because of all of the really hard work that has gone into planning for things like risk management policy, financial reserve policy, rate setting policy, hiring a uh, very highly qualified seasoned CEO um, from a national pool of talent. You know, there's a lot of work that has gone in, but in that event, it, the coalition would, it, it would, all of its, that part of the point of this coalition is it holds the liabilities and it would liquidate those liabilities, but there is no recourse to the member towns. So the, the member town general funds and, and tax funds, you cannot, they, they cannot be, um, the liabilities cannot be connected to those general funds. They are all held with this new nonprofit company um, that is really an agent of the towns. And I hope that helps. The gentleman brought up a good point about reserves. So do you have a responsibility if you go over a certain amount of reserves? But if you have enough reserves, do you return it back partially to the people that are on your uh, utility? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, and I'm going to answer that by just pulling up the website. So this is, there are two websites, and I'm just going to highlight. First, there is this one, cpcnh.org. That brings you to the coalition's website. And there's an About Us page. And you can go down to Key Documents. And if you click that, you'll find all of the, do all the critical documents. There's the... The Joint Powers Agreement, which is the agreement among and between all the towns to appoint someone to the board and to govern this organization and, and to be a member of it. Um, and there are some other details here, but to answer your question about financial reserves, board policies and procedures, this document is really, uh, this is the, the policies of the board that have been adopted, and they do set target reserve levels. There's a minimum target, which is 60 days of operating cash. There's a target, which is 120 days of operating cash. And there's a maximum, which I think is 180 days of, of operating cash. Anything above and beyond that is returned to the customers and to the members, as, as the gentleman asked. But this document, Energy Portfolio Risk Management Retail Rates Financial Reserves, is a very comprehensive and detailed policy document that explains how do we buy power, how do we make sure we're not taking risks so we're not going to go bankrupt, um, and it's, it's very informative on, on sort of the parameters on ensuring that we are um, being smart about our energy pro procurements. It then goes on to describe rate setting and how does this board set the retail electric rate for customers, what kind of rates can we offer, and what are the parameters around setting those rates. And then the final sort of the third leg of this stool is the financial reserves. How do we collect revenue? What can we use that revenue for? Um, and it, it details all of all of this. So sort of joint target reserve levels established. This is where it says, we don't, we're not going to read this document now, but minimum operating reserve target, 60 days, 120 days, um, et cetera. So if anyone wants further detail, I'd encourage you to go to cpcnh.org slash about and then find that policy document that's really comprehensively covers a lot of this material. Hey, Paul, is it fair to ask Paul what he takes from this or do you kind of like, I see your head spinning on those numbers. Is it fair or is it not fair yet without studying on that? Without studying it, I couldn't say, but I don't think it's unreasonable. I don't think unreasonable. What he, what he, what he says is because we're not math people. Yeah, no, I, like I said, I have not studied this. It's the first time I've seen that, but it does, that doesn't sound very reasonable. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? There's a manager. Very good. Right. So uh, you mentioned right now the rate for those 10 towns is 15.8. Am I correct? That's correct. Okay. Well, that's correct for seven of the towns. Three of the towns it is 16.2. Okay, because they, they chose the higher. Yeah, okay, good. So 
if more towns come on, shouldn't the expectation be that that rate's going to go down a little bit? If more car, if more towns come on, our economy of scale will improve, um, and our fixed costs will be spread over more customers, which will make us more cost efficient. Um, so essentially, <laughs> yes, our, our costs will be yeah, spread right over here, more yes, customers, and, and there will be a benefit to that. Okay, yeah, good. So Thank you. Being equal. Paul? Henry, how often are our rates set? Right now we're looking at setting them every six months when the utilities change rates. That does not mean we're <laughs> buying power every six months. We're going to buy sort of right. three months here, six months there, 12 months there, but then we're going to change the rate um, to maintain discounts to the utilities for the foreseeable future, so every six months. Who do you buy we'll, from? We'll, we'll notice that 30 days in advance. Who do you buy from now? We buy from the New England ISO, ISO New England power market. So we buy system power from the wholesale market. Wholesale market, because I do. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, one, one question. You said that money was being sent out sent back to the, um, now would it be the town or the residents that uh, are the, that are purchasing the electricity? If so I'm just looking at this document I've got. Um, it would be net, I'm sorry, kind of like user fees, right? So I mean, the, if, uh, if, who gets the return? If the reserves exceed the six month, you know, maximum, Amount excess, you know, there's excess money that gets refunded right. to the, I guess, the ratepayers. Correct. What What would likely occur is the coalition would reduce its supply rate. Right. Okay. Um, to then, you know, basically burn down reserves to get within the target levels. Okay. So yes, the customers would realize that in, in a reduction in the rate. Right. And as you're, you. and as you're buying electricity you know, three months or six months at a time, and then the rate changes, you're using the reserves to more or less, you know, I guess flatten that curve for the rate. Players. Yes. So, it, I mean, if you really want to get into it, there may be months during the year where our costs exceed revenue. Like maybe December or January, we're actually spending more than we're earning that month. But, you know, the other eight, nine, ten months of the year, we're, we're in the green. So, yeah, you're, you're correct. Yeah, okay. Good. So would we expect a report, like, let's say, at your meetings, like with this committee, that you're going to oversee it as to where our standings are? Is that got, could that be gone in practice? I'm asking you amongst us. Like, it, it, you know what I mean? Kind of pick, right, the, new, the Newport... Uh, where, 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 but where would new we find this? The Newport Coalition would have an annual report that would identify, you know, what our reserves are and how, how that's worked and also the people in the system can you can see how it's going. Which is an annual. You just mentioned six months. Is, is there any it, way you know, that so we could break this down into a six month report at a meeting or somewhere that somebody could, sure we could. catch it or is that too much? I'm, I'm just asking. The, the coalition's budget will be published on the website, and there w there is a required financial audit at least once every two years that will be reported to all of the members of the towns. There has actually been discussion of, of making that once every year as opposed to once every two years, but we have auditing requirements and reporting requirements to all of the member towns. There's also an audit committee, if you have any CPAs locally that might want to get on our, our audit committee that we're going to establish on uh, April 21st. That sounds like I, I suggest you try to find a way that we locally try to curve that down, that maybe you guys can all curve in on that and say, look, yeah, we do it in six months. Does I, I just, Henry, do, just do the local it. towns get to see what's, what's in their individual reserves? Like you it's showed the people? That's a good question. So, so there's two types of reserve. There are joint reserves, which the coalition collects and holds on behalf of all members, and we track that so we know, okay, 8% is from Newport Community Power and 15% is from Nashua Community Power or whatever. 
But that doesn't mean that Nashua or Newport can go and spend that money. That money in the joint reserve is held for the collective benefit of all of the members with programs. There's a second category of reserve, and that is the discretionary reserve. And so an individual member under our policies can apply an adder to their electric rate. Say we're charging 15.8 cents, maybe Newport wants to charge 15.9 cents to collect a Newport discretionary reserve fund. That would be money that would be directly controlled by the town of Newport if you would choose to do that. And what would what would a town be able to do with that discretionary fund? That would be up to the town. So basically, you're saying a, ta a town or the committee for the town can ask to increase their electric rate so that the community can collect more town, which then gets spent. But With, within our within our policies and our contracts, <laughs> right. and this is again so after town meeting. Eventually, if you want to go with the coalition, you will be presented with a cost-sharing agreement yep. and a services contract, okay. and that will detail all of this, and you can say, we as the Board of Selectmen retain the authority to set a uh, discretionary reserve adder, and that's something that only the Board can do. Yeah. You can the also would be no. give that power to an individual. That's that's an option within the contract, but it, it's really it's a decision of the Board um, as to do you want to set a little surcharge on the rate and collect a reserve fund or not? For all the people talking to the TV right now, the answer for me would be no. Yeah, no. Way. Right. no. We want to, we want a shot at this. Yeah, I mean, this is, a, yeah, I mean, the is idea to save as much money as we can, not not yeah. make another piggy bank. Right. I mean, that's the sort of thing like in other states, communities can add like their own gas tax of a penny or something or such and use it for roads and such. But you guys have been very it, good in the past about doing these things and involving us. You need to keep that up. Okay. Sorry. We'll call it the Ed Card Discretionary Fund. No, we won't. We won't call it anything because it won't exist. <laughs> no, I, I don't think that's anything. Not because they're in my one. <laughs> my name on any yeah. Of yeah. I mean, that's. Boy, to go to jail. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm actually. Sure. I'm actually surprised that something like that got through New Hampshire legislature. Yeah. Are the numbers regularly updated on the website as far as the reserves and other numbers? So we, we don't have any revenue yet. Um, we will enroll the first customers on April 23rd, and then we'll enroll through the course of May, and then really the revenue will begin to come in in June. Um, but yes, uh, it won't be updated monthly, but we will, you know, reporting and um, publishing this under our under the right to know law is a, certainly a priority and certainly will occur. It's just because we're right at the beginning of startup, there's, you know, it may be a couple of months before those numbers are fully publicly available. It'll be a while before we really enter into the program anyhow. Correct. Yeah. Um, I was yeah. just wondering if we could get the, the, an updated set of numbers if the community requests um, the numbers. Yes, certainly. Especially, and that's, again, this is for members of the coalition that, that join by board selecting vote on the joint powers agreement. Mm -hmm. If you haven't already, would you post these websites that he just referred to? Will you be able to do that? Because I, I tried to write it down, but I'm not sure I got the right one. And I'm sure other people would like to be able to do that on your... Uh, yeah, but they're on here too. If you got this, if yeah. you look the at websites it. Websites on here. I yeah, if you got to just kind of look. I didn't yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Anything else for this public hearing? All set. I know he he mentioned uh, for me it's some me some action items for yes. us and I. My suggestion, my thought anyway, would be to defer any action until after our next or the yes. final public hearing yes. just so that we can have all information before we we step off this yes. in any direction. Henry, does that upset the timeline any? Oh, I'm sorry. What, sorry, what was the question? We want to defer taking any uh, action, for any direct action such as uh, moving to create the electric aggregation committee and... Uh, and uh, joint, entering into a joint power agreement until after the second hearing. That does not disrupt your individual timeline. I, okay. I will just note that 
This coalition has its <coughs> annual membership meeting on April 21st. Um, Newport is, is welcome to attend that meeting. If you were to join it tonight, then you would have a vote in the board election at that meeting. And if you join on April 24th or 25th, that board would already be elected. So this really, it doesn't matter in terms of your individual timeline and the services you will receive, but if you were you know, enthusiastic about appointing someone to our board, you could do that tonight, but you couldn't do that on the 24th. Right. Uh, what date is your annual meeting, you said? 21st. April 21st, and I can send to the town manager the... Uh, our RSVP for that, and whatever you do tonight, yeah. it, we'd be very pleased if you wanted to send someone, a member of staff, a member of the committee, a member of the board of selectmen, to that just to meet all the other towns and really get a feel for what is what is this coalition and what are these communities, what's it like to get together with them, and, and what the, what is the company like, really? Okay, and that's on a Friday, actually, if I remember right. That's a Friday morning. It's a catered lunch in Concord. So we'll we'll have our we'll conduct our business from nine thirty to one, and then we'll have a sort of celebratory lunch. Okay. All right. Yep. Send the RSVP. Uh, we'll see if someone can go. But I think the sense of the uh, board is to defer any action until after our next hearing. That's appropriate. Yep. Hmm? On the twenty fifth. But that means we, we can go and observe. We just can't vote. And we need. We can go to lunch. So you guys don't elect somebody to go to one of those meetings amongst you, right? Would you like to no. be a, Sure. <laughs> I, I hear they're having a great lunch. All right. We'll probably see if we can find someone. I think it, it makes sense to do it now, you, right? I mean, even though you may, even if we vote it down, you, you need to get some voice in it. Yeah, not if we learned anything from Main Street parking, we're going to get all the information before we make any decisions. Right. I get that, but if you have an opportunity <laughs> to put somebody at that meeting prior to the vote, May 9th, you need to really do that. I think you need to have to be representative, because it's April 21st, we're talking May 9th. We'll, we'll be sure somebody goes. Somebody ought to go. Yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah, to we'll get a representative there. I mean, it's... It, It'll be a learning, whoever goes, it'll be a learning opportunity, and, you know, quite honestly, whoever goes may not have enough information to be able to vote with the amount of knowledge that they would like to have. Before When's your next hearing? I'm sorry, I missed the next one. The 25th. 25th. A, week, so. a week from tomorrow. Yep. Two weeks from tomorrow. At the... Uh, right here. Well, in other words, you have another selectors meeting and then the following week. Mm. Right. That's correct. We're, part, part of the uh, process requires two public hearings. So this is the first one, and we're going to have another one on the 25th, which is two weeks from tomorrow. We would have had it two weeks from today, but there's, this room is already booked for another committee. Well, my reason to ask these questions was simply to say, please clarify it for a lot of people that are totally confused. did a hell of a job, by the way. Thank you. And you both have all answered, you all have answered the right questions. But if you have a chance to get a few more questions in at, at the representation, I think it's yep. worth them, in my opinion, from sitting on this side of the table. Yep, and certainly if, you know, in your review of the information on the website and the various documents, if you come up with any more questions, either let us know what those questions are or come back on the 25th. Well, I think if you were to post who is a representative and their contact, people having the information you gave, and they, they look at this, and they'll have questions, and perhaps yeah. they can mm -hmm. forward that to that individual to say, would you ask these questions? I think it's worth doing. It, right. It, it's, your, it's your business, but don't that make sense? Right, but we haven't formed a committee yet. And if you, anyone here is interested in being on a you committee, need to, you need to post it, please. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anything else for this hearing? All right. In that case, I'm going to close the hearing. Uh, Thank you, Henry, for joining us tonight. Nice job. Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> yeah. Thank you, and, and uh, I'll plan to see you on the 25th, and I may I may try to come up in person to meet meet some of you. Okay. Look, looking Thank forward you. to it. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night now. Good night now. All right.